This episode is brought to you by Snapple. Want to know another Snapple fact? The first hot air balloon passengers were a sheep, a duck, and a rooster. Ridiculous. Check out Snapple.com to find ridiculously flavored Snapple near you. Look, Bumble knows you're exhausted by dating. All the, must not take yourself too seriously, and 6-1 since that matters, and what do I even say other than, hey? <sighs> well... That's why they're introducing an all-new Bumble with exciting features to make compatibility easier, starting the chat better, and dating safer. They've changed, so you don't have to. Download the new Bumble now. Joe, we are here. We made it. It they graduated. They they done did it in more ways than one. Right? They graduated and they killed Marissa. So let's just. <laughs> I texted you and said that I had a lot of thoughts, and I I'm going to start with what I wrote in my notes, and then I'm going to expand on this. Okay. And what I wrote is that this episode is actually really annoying that they killed Marissa because they gave her such a normal human exit and now it feels like killing her is just some spiteful extra nonsense to make sure that they can never that she can never come back to the show and like that is so frustrating mm -hmm. because you have everyone in like like there is still sorrow everyone is going their separate ways and like mm -hmm. that is fine. Like that's like this is perfect. Every, you know, summer is going to Rhode Island. Mm -hmm. In four months or so, Seth will be moving to Rhode Island. Mm -hmm. Ryan's going to Berkeley. Marissa's gonna go do what Ryan was planning to do at the start of this season and be on a fishing boat. Yeah. Like it it just was like this is such a perfect, beautiful final episode if that's what you were going for. Mm-hmm. And even if you weren't, even if you were going to go for another season, sending Marissa off to like reconnect with her dad, who she was always close with, like mm -hmm. it just is like that is such a good way to write her off. You never have to bring her back if you don't want to. But if you decide that you want to bring her back, there's always that door open. And then they're just like, let's just fucking kill her. How dare, how <laughs> dare she, how dare she want to leave this show? Like, like that's the vibe that you get from yeah. like watching this episode. It, it, I think the 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 thing that you nailed in your text message to me, which was like this is in insanely mean spirited, is what you said. And I was like, exactly, yeah. like it is definitely that. Like it feels, it reeks of that kind of like masculine, masculine bro bullshit, where it's like, well, you don't want to be in my show, well, you're never gonna be in the show ever again. Yeah. It's it's so unnecessary to slam this door closed yeah. for for no real reason. And I I think you and I have talked about this before, but um, fill me in a little bit, because obviously I think, you know, a bit more of the behind the scenes drama than I'll ever really know. But I know that someone told me that Mari uh, that Misha Barton wanted to leave the show mm -hmm. to pursue acting. I think you have also told me that there was a lot of like similar to Marissa activities behind the scenes that may have been making her difficult to work with also. So it wasn't, it wasn't like it was like, Oh no, please don't leave. Like it was kind of just like, okay, she wants to leave. She's kind of been a bit of a problem anyway. Everybody wins. Yeah. Everybody wins. So I don't know why, yeah. unless Honestly, the only way I'm even slightly okay with this is if it was Misha's idea of like, you should just kill Marissa. I think that like if she walked into the writer's room and suggested that, I'd still say it's a bad idea, but I at least I'm like, okay, this doesn't feel as spiteful if that's And that the case. I'm not entirely sure of. Yeah. Oh, I frankly probably doubt it. I can't imagine 
like her a her stepping into a writer's room and requesting that yeah. nor can i believe a world where they just were taking suggestions from cast members left and right and center yeah. on this type of stuff i mean this is going to be most of what we talk about in this episode because it's like what the fuck man like it is just so cruel and yeah. like unnecessary and like it mis- it makes me mad because there's some really great scenes mm-hmm. like the scene where they break into the model home and go swimming and are just like reminiscing about mm-hmm. everything and there's like a tearful goodbye and everything I'm like this is pitch perfect this is no notes love it yeah absolutely love it and I'm just like, why couldn't we end on any of these scenes? Any I of these scenes that work so well. Can I post some theories? Let's hear them. So theory one is that season two's finale, which was like itself like a cultural phenomenon, is how do you top that, right? So like you, it needs, the the, the OC has now become known for like this like jaw dropping unexpected type of finale as for especially for like a prime time soap opera at the time yeah so the one thing is like okay they needed to do something that was splashy give her a big big send off and like to you and me yes it does seem mean spirited at the time it could have just been like how are we going to top it from next year and then it's like, okay, well, she's leaving anyway. Let's just kill her, right? Yeah. Two, I think that, like, so many shows now have dealt with cast members leaving in a way that is not, like, this final, right? Yeah. Like, I think about Crazy Ex-Girlfriend. Crazy Ex-Girlfriend after season one, um, Santino Fontana, who played uh, Greg, uh, he ends up, was it season one or two? Well, anyway, when Greg leaves the show, it's because he gets a contract to do something else, but they just made it so that way he just goes, he was able to go back to business school in like the East Coast. Yeah. And then like left. They leave the door open for him to return, but it is pretty finite that he is gone, gone from the show, right? Because it's the other thing is that like you have to, I don't think at the time for the OC that. Because the internet and internet fandom for television shows is not what it is right now. And so, like, you know, you're not getting, like, um, you're not getting retweeted, reposted uh, IG stories about, like, you know, variety or deadline articles that, like, are going to inform the narrative of your show. Yeah. You're getting, like, Tiger Beat. You're getting, you know, you're getting those kinds of, those kinds of, like, trashy Perez Hilton-y type stuff right now. So that's the other thing, too, is that, like, they did it also as a way to kind of capture the the imaginations of those folks and to just like get rid of her. Yeah. I also think and this is not a theory about their machinations anymore. This is more of a like a response to what, like, I've seen in culture since Marissa's death is like people are less willing to just kill people off like that right like shows are less winning to kill people off like that they give them some sort of even like will and grace like will and grace um uh gregory hines who played uh the one of the partners of will's firm he like legit dies but they didn't kill him in the show they were just like oh he just went to london he went to go run the london office or no he retired or something like that it is weird that they do that i think that there's a lot of truth in that and I think it's more common to see minor reoccurring characters die mm-hmm. off in shows, especially like when you're thinking of stuff like a hospital drama or even yeah. a, a sitcom in a hospital, you might have like a reoccurring patient that you eventually kill off. But yeah, it's it's been a hot minute since I've seen a TV show character killed off in that kind of way that it wasn't, you know, something like lost or you know like the sopranos or game of thrones or and even then by the end of game of thrones they were not killing main characters anymore in those final seasons which kind of was a bummer let's talk about some non marissa stuff real fast and then we'll i mean we have to come back to marissa to wrap this but uh we get confirmation that the potential three-way that was suggested in the limousine did happen and like jesus christ taylor is a wild woman 
I mean, you know, she was dating Dean Hess. That is true. That I cannot believe that Dean Hess was still this season. Th- this season. This season feels so long. I want Dean Hess to come back to like Marissa's funeral and spit on her grave. Like, <laughs> yeah. Pa. Um. Well, and I then, knew like, you would end up in the ground, bitch. <laughs> and then she gets invited to be part of the inner circle. Uh, finally, and she gets so excited, and it certainly isn't because they're about to lose one of the core four, and they need to like yeah. <laughs> fill that position with somebody else. Um, Caitlin moves back. First thing that she says, and it is the most insane line I can imagine a human being saying to their future stepfather, is that she explains that her classes, her grades had gone from A's to D's, and now she's hoping he can make her A's into a pair of D's. And I'm just like, what the fuck (laughs) is this show? And the look on his face, which also to his credit, like to his credit, he does such it's such a great line delivery of like, well, you know, cosmetic enhancement is a decision that you should discuss with your mother. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) because it's like he's not he He is a professional. He's a professional. He's like he's a plastic surgeon. Right. And he's a professional. So like he's not going to say, you know, you look fine just the way you are, because in his mind, it's like, well, you know, it could whatever you want. Money's money. Money's money. And, you know, although in that situation, isn't he essentially just paying himself for that work? (laughs) Yeah, right. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so whatever. We get this moment where Seth asks Sandy to not do his cheer that he's done at previous events like this. And Sandy Cohen raps. This is a rap song. Calling it a cheer is is dramatically incorrect. Is and- very white. <laughs> oh, my God. It's, the thing that it makes me think of is uh, in Wayne's World. When they're talking to the owner of Noah's Arcade and he's like, I have a new commercial where I rap. And he's like, come to the place where the games are played. It's cool. It's hip. It's Noah's Arcade. And I'm like, that is literally what Sandy Cohen is doing in this scene. It is the whitest of white boy rap. Uh, Absolutely insane. Dawn has apparently saved up so much money in the four months of her being a waitress at a dive diner that she can buy a brand new, well, a used but very nice looking car. Yeah. Restored car for Ryan. And entirely like Ryan's speed, right? Like it is like that is a car when you when you think of Ryan Atwood, like that's the kind of car that he is going to drive. You know what's really interesting, Joe, is that this episode, if we're going to talk about symmetry here, Volchek destroys both of the most prized gifts for graduating for Marissa and Ryan. You know what I mean? Like, to pay Volchek back, she has to pawn her necklace that her mom gives her, and then he causes Ryan's car to go off road and blow the fuck up. Yeah. I, I mean, I guess I there's hope she like got a, insurance. I just kept thinking that. I'm like, damn, yeah. hope she got insurance. One of the things that I wrote down that just blew my mind is that Marissa's packing and Julie Cooper walks in and maybe this has been there before and I never noticed it, but Marissa has an against me poster on her wall. And I remember that I said this probably in like the fourth episode of this show where we find out that apparently Marissa is really into punk music, but I still refuse to believe that there has been beyond this poster and that conversation in the car in like the third episode of this show. Mm -hmm. There is not a single thing that she has said or done to imply that she has listened to any music at all, let alone punk music. I, I don't even know the band, but like, I know you're right. <laughs> the model pool scene, I mentioned it earlier. I love this scene. I love them reminiscing of the early days. They bring it all the way back to like summer, having a crush on Ryan in the beginning of the series. Uh, it, it is very funny. They're like just dunking on Seth left and right in this. And it's very well deserved because he's Seth Cohen. And then the other thing I wrote down, that I thought was really, really cute. This is before the Marissa death is, Summer and Seth go into Seth's room and he has a graduation gift for her and it's this gigantic box. And just the cute way that Summer opens the box and like looks inside and looks around and is just like, it's empty. <laughs> and then he's like, no, it's not. Get in there. And that's when she finds that he's been accepted to the college that they've been waiting to hear back from mm-hmm. and that, you know, she's going to have to do the fall semester alone. But come January, he'll be up there with her and 
their their love story can continue i saw it that that is very cute that is a cute little dumb thing that that i enjoyed mostly mostly because of as i said before rachel bilson i think is the mm-hmm. underrated star of this show just like her comedic timing like the fact that she oh no i feel like she should have found something either in like romantic comedies or yeah. like a like a sitcom like it 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 baffles me that she is not like the biggest star well to I mean, come away from this show i mean to be fair right she did do heart of dixie yeah so she's had like some success again but like you're right she's not she like they've all had varying levels of success say for maybe misha barton but like rachel bilson deserved to be right up there yeah i feel like the two biggest ones in my mind is like people that i knew before i watched the oc for how much shit i saw them in mm-hmm. was obviously adam brody adam brody had like a pretty good run yeah and still adam brody like had shows- gilmore girls he yeah. had like a really good part on gilmore girls well i thought he left gilmore girls for this he did but that's the thing yeah. like he came from a good <laughs> from yeah. a good situation um, and then obviously in the same vein would be like Peter Gallagher, who's like yeah. was already famous before this show. But yeah, like this was supposed to be his starring vehicle. Yeah. Like he just he never stopped showing up and shit. Like I'm still yeah. like, hey, there he is. Dear Colgate, I love that you love that I love being at home. You even let me whiten my teeth from home because you know how I feel about getting up from my cloud couch. The Colgate Optic White LED Kit gives professional level results in just 10 minutes a day for 10 days when used as directed. And that's why, Colgate, I want you to meet my parents. Because ever since meeting you, I've been living life to the brightest. Colgate Optic White. Find it at all major retailers. This episode is supported by FX's The Bear. The Emmy Award-winning hit series returns, following Carmi, Sydney, and Richie as they do what it takes to elevate The Bear, their fine dining establishment, to the highest level, all while doing their best just to stay in business. FX's The Bear. All new episodes streaming June 27th, only on Hulu. We're making an ad. Napping yeah. ads. I hear that Gary Sinise is free. Oh, okay, great. He hasn't worked since 2020. <laughs> So, um, what would be the script that we would have Gary Sinise say for the Napping Through Happy Hour podcast? Listen to this damn show. Damn it. The Napping Through Happy Hour podcast brought to you by Geekscape. Real life, real drama, real time. I'm Gary Sinise. That's the ad! ad. That's the ad. That's the ad. Let's just, let's just finish this up here. So... The big, the big death, the big thing is that Ryan is driving Marissa to the airport. Volchek has been stalking them all day, and he starts speeding up, trying to force them to pull over. Mm-hmm. Now, this is I. This is easier said than done as a person in a circumstance like this. I always feel like when you're in like one of these high speed situations, and the person is on the like on the other side of you not behind you Mm -hmm. i'm always like why not just slam on the brake like they're gonna just like keep going in that direction for a little bit before they realize that you had broke hit the brake and then you can Mm -hmm. like turn around get away also they have cell phones there's no like there's no way that by this point there's not like a call 911 there's a situation happening Yeah. yeah like like there's there's a lot of better ways to handle this than ryan continuing to keep driving seemingly out of spite to not let Volchek get one on them or whatever. Um, knocks the car off the road. Uh, Ryan co- seems like he's all right, but he looks in. It looks like Marissa's in a bad situation. He also sees the gas line is dropping in. Mm-hmm. So he shatters the window, gets Marissa out of the car and he's carrying her very similar to in Mexico big explosion Very to a lot of uh, you, we, we see it's like the symbolism they're hitting it oh you they want you to know that this is a motif <laughs> yeah explosion in the background and joe i have to give you a little bit of a oopsies you may have given me more information than i realized you had mentioned hallelujah way back in season one i think is when it shows up mm-hmm. and you said there's some nice symmetry with this song 
Aww. later on down the line. And as we were, as we were getting, as I was getting ready to watch this, Barb had mentioned you're. She said you're going to love the song that they use at the end of the episode. And I said, "Is it Hallelujah?" <laughs> <laughs> so I wouldn't have thought about it until she had said that to me, but I was like, oh, obviously this is the Maybe symmetry that Joe it. talked about over two years ago now. But yeah, so we're going to dive into that music in a second, but I still want to talk about this mirrors like it, they do a, as much as I hate almost everything about this episode. They do a good job of mirroring a lot of past episodes in this moment as well. It is what it is. Marissa says, don't go get help. Just be with me. I don't want to be left alone. And then she essentially dies in Ryan's arms. And um, Joe, the crazy thing is that I don't even know. There is a world in my brain that season four, they just like Volchek's also gone. Like there's just no justice system for Volchek. That's, Volchek that's is a in series wrap. Yeah, it's a series wrap on Volchek. He got to Mexico. He's safe. Like it's like it could be the case for all I know. But we already talked about it. There's some good songs in this episode. I think we both know what the song is, so we're just going to say it right now. It's probably Imogen Heap's cover of Hallelujah. Are, are we yeah. both in agreement on that? All oh, right, of so course. Of course. My favorite, and you know this, my favorite use of a, of music in this show is in the next episode. So okay. we're going to have, so folks, you're going to have to wait till August to hear me gush about it. But like, I got to tell you, this is probably. This is also in the top five just because like symmetry and also the bringing back image and heap as well is really great yeah. because she did the um, hide she and seek and she's in this twice. She's like image yeah. and heap is all over this episode. Um, so Chris Holmes, I don't care what my friends say, plays both in the opening scene and when Dawn is finally leaving and Ryan gives her a hug and says it's more of a see you soon. Um mm-hmm. The Mohiv 3 breaking the ice plays when they're setting up for graduation. Image and Heap speeding cars plays during the actual graduation scene. Um, mm-hmm. Now, this was the only other song I thought you might possibly pick, Joe, instead of Hallelujah from Image and Heap. Uh, Khalees Bossy featuring Two Short plays yes. when Caitlin is changing her room, uh, changing over rooms to live in Marissa's room. Yeah. Like, um, it, it's also wonderful because like, is this, this is the episode where she says to, um, to Julie, like, you know, now I get to rule Harbor. Yeah. <laughs> it's, like, it's, ins- I'm Boston. I was like, Oh my God, that's right. This is, this came out. So then. let me ask you, let me ask you a question. Okay. Because okay. I'm curious about where they're going to go with Caitlin. And mm-hmm. what I mean by that is that setup seems like she's going to be a mean girl. You know what I mean? Like, and Julie gives like the eye roll and everything, but this is like a Caitlin before her sister dies in a tragic car accident. So I'm v- like, you don't have to answer this for me, but I am curious if this changes who Caitlin is as a person or if Caitlin's just like, I don't know. I only saw my sister like twice a year for the last 10 years. Like that's a bummer. But anyway, I'm still going to be like the mean girl who rules this school (laughs) in the meantime. Like I'm very curious how they handle the Caitlin of it all. Um, The last song to mention commuter chapters plays when they break into the model home. But uh, yeah, it's I to back to the Caitlin thing and bossy perfect song use. But yeah, I'm, it feels like it would be dishonest to not have this giant moment not change her in some way. I mean, well, we know that Caitlyn is not like fully evil, right? Like we know yeah. that she's just she has a little bit of a mischievous streak. She takes after Ju- she's like she takes after Julie a lot. Boy does uh, she. Yeah. And it's similar. It's like it will change her in the way that like yeah, she's going to act out about it, right? Like, you know, it's very um you've seen dear evan hansen right yeah like it's very requiem you know i will sing no requiem like it affects you but it's also like how did i who did i really know i mean like the the previous episode man of the year where they spend like that day together like that's like the nice the the last happy memory right and yeah that's like the best her relationship has ever been with her sister yeah ostensibly yeah. yeah um all right well joe I don't think that this quite had the pop culture impact that the previous season's final episode had, Um, but it still was a big deal. So in keeping with that, 
Let's talk about some pop culture stuff that we've been indulging in that may or may not have been a big deal. Last week, I talked about the show New Girl Mm -hmm. in the similar boat. I did finally finish Happy Endings, which I loved. I adored Happy Endings. So um, that's one that I know I will rewatch because I've rewatched quite a few of the episodes. Now that I've seen the whole story, I've just you know cherry picked episodes that i've specifically enjoyed and loved uh for random rewatches or to show people uh including the christmas episode uh from season three which we actually did a christmas 365 episode on um where they find out that one of the characters birthday is on christmas so they try to have a christmas free birthday party for her on christmas day uh it's just a very charming fun silly show if you like how i met your mother or friends, it fits right into that same yeah. ballpark. So Happy big birthday, recommend. Jane and yeah. Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's all I'm gonna say for that. Guys, check it out. It's on a bunch of different streaming sites, I think. So have have at it. Joe, how about you? What is what is your big pop culture thing to tie up season three with? Oh my God. Um I so I'm actually going to go back to a little piece of music and I want to um, I I want people to understand that like I'm constantly looking for the song of the summer. I said this a few episodes ago and I recently created a playlist called like general gayness. Well, it (laughs) uses the F slur, so I don't know. Okay. (laughs) I mean, you just, you said it already in this episode, like general faggotry. And (laughs) I was going to a, um, I was going on a, like a mini road trip to LA with some friends and we were just like, let's make a playlist. And so we were putting a bunch of songs in there and this song came up, (laughs) this song came up that I like ever since then the songs have come up and I'm like, oh my God, I need to put this in there. A song called uh, Sprite by Christopher, okay. where the I is an X, Ooh. is basically like it's a song where it's one of those like gay talking songs. Like, are they singing or are they talking? And it's like a, it's a full like EDM type of gay dance hit. But it's talking about how like, you know, I'm I'm don't get me a drink. Get me a Sprite like. <laughs> Don't get I don't want to drink. Uh, just get me a Sprite. And I'm like, ah, uh, see, we need more sober anthems. I love it. You know that I love a sober anthem uh, as a sober Sally. So I'm into exactly. it. You should. If that's a Spotify playlist, you should send that my way because I will. Uh, I can make it one. My friend, Because I can I always go in for a, a couple summer jams. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I've been ever since you recommended it to me i have not stopped listening to espresso by right? uh, sabrina carpenter it, i think that may be the you know capital s song of the summer yeah. but joe we're gonna have a bit of a summer break now not unlike the kids at newport beach mm-hmm. we will be back the first sunday in august to dive into the final season of the oc so stay tuned for that and in the meantime I mean, I guess we should say right now, you and I are both going to be at San Diego Comic-Con. We're going to be tearing it up. So if you're in the San Diego area, hit us up on Instagram. Maybe we can catch up somewhere around San Diego that that week uh, when we're we're not running around Orange County. So come on, come on over. Absolutely perfect. We'll both be hanging out at the Geekscape table. You'll be out doing some fun press stuff. It's going to be a good week. I can't wait to see you and give you a big hug, buddy, because I've missed you the last like two San Diegos. I know. So, I've missed you a lot, too, and I can't wait. I can't wait to be I, among the people again. This is going to be the first time I see you in person since we started this podcast. Yes. Oh, my God. <laughs> it has. Uh, and I'm going to bring my uh, recording board, so maybe we'll record one or two episodes live from the uh, the hotel room at the convention center. <laughs> so, it. yeah, we're going to have a blast. All right. We'll be back soon, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.
You're listening to the Geekscape Network. 